Benjamin Netanyahu's long-time leadership of Israel could be about to end. In the last hour, right-wing leader Naftali Bennett said he's joining a coalition with the main centrist leader, Yad Lapid. After four inconclusive elections in two years, the final deadline is coming up on Wednesday to make the coalition deal a reality. Well, our diplomatic editor, James Bays, is live from West Jerusalem. James, there's been a lot of speculation swirling around these talks that have been going on. Just bring us up to date with what's been going on. Well, dramatic developments in Israeli politics. The long reign of Benjamin Netanyahu may now be very close to an end, and it's certainly looking that way after Naftali Bennett, uh, a right-wing politician, said he was going to join a coalition uh, that has been formed by the centre-left politician, Yair Lapid. Uh, the two men have come to a deal, and the deal, uh, many thought of this coalition, depended on Mr Bennett being the king maker, but it looks like the deal actually also involves him becoming initially at least the king, because under the deal, Mr. Bennett will be the first prime minister, and then it will rotate to Mr. Lapid at a later stage. It's almost a done deal, but not yet. Remember, there are more than two parties involved in this coalition, and all of them, I think all of the deals have to be absolutely confirmed with all the coalition members. And then the next stage is that Mr. Lapid, who was asked to form a coalition, goes back to Israel's president to say that he's managed to form a government. Uh, we've heard, as I just said from Mr Bennett uh, in the last hour, uh, much of the criticism of him has been that he is joining this very broad coalition that involves left-wing parties. He made the point, though, addressing the Israeli people, that this new government, if he was able to form it, was going to be even more right-wing than the current one. We've also heard in the last few minutes from Benjamin Net Netanyahu, the current prime minister, the long-serving prime minister, and he said that um, Mr Bennett had uh, not lived up to his election promises uh, by doing a deal with left-wing parties. So a great deal of controversy, a great deal of, of accusations by all the key players, but particularly from Prime Minister Netanyahu, who may well be losing his grip on power. And Benjamin Netanyahu placed himself right at the center of the recent Israeli action that we saw against Palestinians when um, members of Hamas were firing rockets into Israel and Israeli military was firing missiles into Gaza. The question is, of course, about the, the ceasefire that we're only days into at the moment. Is there any indication that should Benjamin Netanyahu step down, what the relationship between Israel and the Palestinians is likely to be? Well, if Mr Netanyahu is no longer prime minister, it's now looking pretty certain that it'll be Mr Bennett who is the first prime minister of this new change coalition government. Let me tell you about Naftali Bennett and his policies towards the Palestinians and his own personal views. He is opposed to a two-state solution. He is opposed to a Palestinian state. He is opposed to any restriction on settlements. That puts him completely against the agreed international uh, position, the position of UN. Security Council resolutions, the position of the quartet of key players on the Middle East. But, and there's a very big but here, as I said to you before, his coalition, if he does finally get to form it, and it's looking likely now, will include parties from a broad uh, cross-section of Israeli politics, including left-wing parties. Uh, and so I don't think they're going to be able to do anything with regard to the Palestinian issue because they disagree on it. And so I think what is most likely is that this will be a new government that will deal with all the other issues facing Israel, but not do anything significant on the Palestinian issue. And that in some ways might rather match the Biden administration's approach. Yes, they want to improve the lives of ordinary Palestinians. They're talking about rebuilding Gaza, but they're not planning to launch any face-to-face -face negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. In the past few years, James, it certainly seemed to those of us looking on from outside that Benjamin Netanyahu has been fighting increasingly hard to keep his grip on power. This is more than just politics for Benjamin Netanyahu, though, isn't it? His future, should he be forced, out, forced to step down from office, could be radically different. Talk us through what the possible implications are for him. 
Well, for Benjamin Netanyahu and for Israel, this is, if he is out, going to be the end of an era because he has been the longest serving prime minister of this country. This time around, he's been in power uh, for 13 years. So it marks a big moment for the country. For the prime minister himself, after that length of time in power, and remember, he was also prime minister in the 1990s, it'll be a big, big change. He's not leaving politics. If he does uh, no longer uh, end up as prime minister, he will be the opposition leader and leader of Likud, which is still the largest uh, party. But as you say, he is also facing corruption charges. And many believe that having the office of prime minister being the incumbent was beneficial in terms of fighting those corruption charges. So he, I think, uh, if it, if what is, seems to be happening, and we don't have it absolutely, we don't, we haven't got to the stage of the president um, meeting and saying that the new government can be formed. But if it is, if he is losing power, then it's losing power politically, but potentially also um, affecting him legally too. James, thanks very much indeed. That's James Bayes, our diplomatic editor, talking to us from West Jerusalem.